these are the tools you need on the retro to remove the rear wheel, at least like I do. On the retro, uh, you also uh, need a jack to help out a little bit. Um, I put it up on the center stand. I will remove the pontoon, that's 10 millimeter. I, I just, it's easier to remove the front one there, so I always pull the front one out. 13 millimeter, pop this uh, exhaust pipe right off. And of course you take your clips off, take the brake clips off, take the brake pins off, take the 17 millimeter um, reaction arm screws out so you can swing the bracket out of the way. You'll loosen up your axle nut, you'll loosen the pinch nut, and you just start taking everything off. And when you get ready to roll this tire out, unlike the CT, you have this bar here, and you will need to get that tire out. And I have found that it is much easier to remove the muffler and use the jack to bring the rig on up, uh, probably another five inches or so. And then the tire will just roll out. You don't have to take the rotor off. You can just roll the tire out if you do it the way that I'm doing it. So let me get to that. Well, that took about 10 minutes. Uh, the only extra thing I had to grab was a screwdriver to pull the uh, axle out and uh, went ahead and drained all that fresh new oil that I just put in it back out. So ready to pull it out and put it on the bench. I have my assistant with me this morning. He takes care of everything. And uh, kind of a, a little bit of a dreary morning. It's been raining, which the rain's welcome. Can't argue with that. Here's the package that John sent to me. I'm put a new drive gear in while I got it open. Uh, the one in there is sharpened off pretty good, so while I'm going to the trouble to get this open, I might as well get that changed. Here are the new studs. Went ahead and got two, uh, just in case I find uh, the other one maybe cracked or something on the inside. And supposedly the issue is that this um, little flat part, the cap part, has peeled off somehow. Uh, did send me a new seal. Um, I may not need it, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, but it's good to have, in case I do tear it up, I can replace it. And I got a, a couple of gaskets down here, paper gaskets for it, in case I tear the one already on it, and I don't know where this part goes. Um, I guess I'll figure it out. There will be a part in there shaped like this. And, um, yeah, John thought of everything. Okay. Got it off the bike. I don't see any cracking anywhere. That's just a stain waterline. Um, everything looks good so far as the casing. So I don't believe that was the issue. Didn't think it was, um, but it looks good. You can see that this stud is further out than the other one. This is the one that's coming loose. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this all apart um, to get this cover off and uh, get to work here. But I recommend you do this in a tub. I've got a tote that I'm gonna set up here. Once I get it all loosened up, I'll actually break it apart inside the tote because there are uh, needle bearing pins in here and they're gonna fall out. So I recommend you do this in a tote so that one doesn't bounce on the floor and uh, then you're you know, down till you find it or you order more. Okay, so uh, the gasket did not survive. I kind of expected that. I was as careful as I could be, but you know, you gotta pull it apart. There's only so much you can do and this was just stuck to this side and it stayed while the rest of the gasket went. Uh, you can see why now. All these needle pins just kind of fall out. Since I know what to expect, um, I pretty much was real careful about it. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't want these to scatter everywhere and get lost. But uh, now I got to get this off. 
uh, the whole ring and these I had to take these bolts out put the new drive gear in um, gonna have to fix the the bolts back there yeah there was no save in this gasket I tried I mean it, it did a good job but I, I'm not too terribly surprised about it you can see this stud is fine and ta-da there's the problem it uh, literally broke in a perfect circle right around this stud and pulled it right out. Well, I got the bearing out by simply driving the studs out. Uh, now that I have it out, I can see where it's been rubbing the studs pretty good bit. So I'm gonna have to think about how to address that. And uh, this is the felled one that was pulling through and I don't know maybe this thing heated them up and that's why the stud failed uh, but this bearing was rubbing on it and the bearing is no good so I've already ordered a new bearing this is the um, oil puke guard it stops it from throwing oil up here to the breather so bad and uh, this is the shim that's here I'm going to have to check the spacing here pretty good. When I put this back, um, I may, I don't know, I may have to uh, add a shim here. Don't know yet because I don't want it to rub again. All right, so that was pretty easy. Just uh, took the 13 millimeter bolts out. I used a, an impact. Uh, this is the old drive you can see there. Let's see, this uh, this is the new one. And you can see uh, there was still a little life left in the old one. But uh, definitely you can see that the new one drive gear has better splines on it. It was a simple plan, but now it's been over a week. Um, needless to say, the video is, you know, I was just going to pull it, replace the stud, put it back together. <clears throat> Things did not go as planned. Let's just say that when I got this opened, um, I discovered that the bearing had been rubbing on the stud heads. Again, I, I don't know where I am in this video. It really doesn't matter at this point. Um, so it weakened the stud enough that it wouldn't torque down. If I'd have kept torquing it, it would have popped the head off eventually. This is the bearing. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but the outer race is chewed up. And it was introducing pieces and stuff in here. So this bearing is really, really rough. There's even a catch on it in one place where it'll snag and bounce back. So had to get a new bearing. <clears throat> I got it all back together, ready to go, and I ran into, uh, shall we say, the root of the problem. And I'll show you here on this other final drive cover. You can see right here where the head of the stud is proud of the inner bearing race. You see that little gap. Now note this area right here. See how that looks? And this area here, this was never uh, machined out. Now, if you look at the new one, this is that same area here. You can see this is machined down. It has been machined down to allow for the thickness of the shield. So I had to get this. <clears throat> now there was only a black one available. So I'm gonna have a silver black Final drive. But I discovered it had a two-wheel drive final drive part in here. I could never, when I was trying to figure it out, I uh, finally figured out this part, this, this shim is not in the one-wheel drive parts diagram. It's in the two-wheel drive. And I believe what happened when this was originally machined incorrectly, 
This was put in. They ran into a problem with lash. They could, and this is rather thick too. This is not thin. It looks thin on video, but for a shim, that's huge. And they could not get lash out of it. They were probably getting zero lash. So in order to get lash, rather than investigating and figuring out this was machined wrong, in order to force lash, they put a shim here. And you can see it's had some rubbing on it, some wear. Um, they put the shim on here, and this forced this gear out enough to allow for some lash. And this right here is what was causing my rear brake to squeal. But long story short, <clears throat> I uh, I got to rebuild it. <clears throat> so I got everything set up. I, I'm not going to go through the process of video in it all, but John at Heindel did not have this plate. If he had had this plate, I would not be taking this apart. I would send it back because because they're doing a replacement. I'll do a couple of more video updates. So it means I will have to set the lash, which means I will have to remove the yoke, which means I got to remember the position that it's all in. <clears throat> Make sure I get the uh, wedge pin back in in the correct orientation, all that good stuff. Uh, no big deal, but I will have to to mark it and do that, and get my lash set properly. Okay, I heated the studs because they had red Loctite on them. I pressed them out, uh, took a socket um, larger than the head of the stud, put over it and pressed to get the pressure right around it so I didn't spread it out and like accidentally crack the plate. I don't think that would happen, but better safe than sorry. I got the plate off, cleaned it up, um, got the plug out. For reference, this is M10 1.25 threads on the studs, and this is M8 1.25 threads on the vent. And this is how I set the studs. I used a torque wrench, bring it up to 35 Newton meters with a stack of washers, pulls it in, tightens it down. Uh, this vise is not so much tight, it's got a grip, but I just used the two screwdrivers to keep it from spinning problem here is now resolved. The top of the stud is lower than the bearing race. So it's looking good. Okay, outer cover is all put together. New stud shield. Got the uh, bearing pressed in. No shims. I'm going to try it with no shims. I got the 45 needle bearings. Um, couple of ways to do that but what I do is I just use red tack grease and once I put all this together and it's done I'm, I'm gonna change the oil after about 50 60 miles anyway um, but I put red tack grease to hold the needles in um, put it in I'll put it in with one uh, of the thinnest paper gaskets and we'll measure the lash and see where we are um, if you have too little lash, add paper gaskets. If you have too much lash, add metal shims. And that's the process I'm going to do now. I'm not going to, you know, do a lot of video on it. I just, I, I got to do this and I've got a dial gauge over there I'll set up. I had to take this off. Um, I have to take the yoke off and set my dial gauge up and work the lash to make sure that it falls within tolerance and I have that written down somewhere that's available online too but uh, yep gotta get to work almost ready to reassemble and check the lash I got the 45 needle bearings in uh, the tape with a little grease on it just helps protect the seal that's already in there uh, I've got the input shaft marked so I know which way this was oriented and which way the uh, wedge bolt was oriented. I don't have to guess or try to remember or go look any of that up. Um, I just gotta put the thinnest paper gasket that I have on, tighten it all down and check the lash. If I'm lucky, the lash will be within range. So the ongoing saga here, um, I use the only shim that I have, which was 0 .007, 7 thousandths. That got me down to about 14 thousandths uh, of lash. And I drove over to McMaster Car. I bought the package of shims here. 
UPC number 25280 if you need to order them. They're uh, 19 shims in here. This is the eighth inch one, don't need it, but it's perfect fit. I mean, it's, it's better than the original shims fit. So that's, uh, that's perfect. So now I'm gonna try to put this together, hopefully for the last time, and get the lash right. Okay, I doubled the shim from seven thousandths to fourteen thousandths. I got the lash down to nine thousandths. Yeah, if there's a bright side to this, I can tell you one thing. I'm getting really good at cracking this final drive open. Uh, I, I timed it this time. Uh, I had it together and I had the bolts tight, not torqued, but tight. And I was able to open it to the point you see on the bench in front of me in 68 seconds. So, <laughs> I'm getting good at that part. I also learned that the red and tacky um, holds the needle bearings in place really, really well. Uh, the past time that I did it, I did not remove these. As long as you're very careful, um, you could do everything, put it right back together. Um, some say they do this slash setting without the needle bearings installed. And to me, I, I could do that, but I'm, I'm just not positive if, if this helps stabilize, if it impacts the lash at all. But the other thing I'm also concerned about is once I do get it together and get it right, and I'm like, yay, I don't want to have to open it again to put these needle bearings in. Well, 22 thousandths got me down to about eight thousandths of lash. And it took me 47 seconds to tear the drive down again. Halla freaking Luya. All right, I got it. Four and a half thousand slash. I ended up with a 32,000 shim. I, I measured, I had a 24 thousandths and I had a 32,000 shim in the bag. And rather than doubling shim, I said, the heck with it. I threw the 32 thousandths in there and used the thinnest gasket, figuring, eh, I'll put the thicker gasket in it if I have to. Um, but I got it all tightened down, not torqued, but I tightened down, and I have just under five thousandths lash on it. I've got like... Um, Four and a half thousandths of lash. You can see it wiggling there. I've seen mention where they want you to install the yoke on here and the wedge bolt and pull on this before you check lash. Lash is defined as three to six thousandths on the edge of one of these splines. The other thing that I realized is if you push this in and check it, you still get four and a half thousandths lash. I've tested it both ways. I'm, I'm still seeing that four to five thousandths lash whether I push in or pull out. And it makes sense because this gear inside is just a ring. So you're just gonna be measuring it at, at the back or at the front. The lash is defined at this point. If you move further and further away and, and measure lash up here, it's not gonna be three to six thousandths anymore. It's gonna be much larger. And I mean, technically, if you go far enough away, the lash will be, you know, two or three miles. Of course, I don't wanna to go to town to measure the lash on this, but you know, it's, it's defined right there. So I, I'm thrilled. I've got it. I'm going to torque it down, double check everything, but I'm going to put about 100 miles, 50 to 100 miles on this drive. Then I'm going to change the oil, uh, check for metal bits, anything in there that I need. But I, I think I got it. I, I'm, we're going to be going on a vacation here because this all started uh, two weeks. Uh, it's been two weeks. Wow. I uh, was planning on going to Burp up in Virginia, and the only problem that I had was I, I couldn't get this uh, stud to torque down. It, it stopped at 25 and just kept pulling. Little did I know, <laughs> here we are two weeks later, and I finally got this thing rebuilt. And this is a mess of a video, so I don't know what it's going to edit out like. If you'd like to see this, let me know. Encourage me. I'll, I'll try to, to do more videos. I mean... Right now, the channel's so small, it doesn't make any money. There's no incentive. You know, it's, it's really for me, and it takes a lot of extra time to do videos and, and put them up. Not that I mind, but, you know, when I put one up, it gets 200 views and nobody's interested. It's kind of disappointing, but four and a half thousand slash. All right. For reference, that's what I use on the splines. Uh, I do have a O-ring. Uh, installed on my drive gear. I don't know if you can kind of see it back there, but uh, 
That's a good idea. It is, I believe, an inch and a half ID, eighth inch diameter chemical resistant o-ring because it is going to be in grease. That's kind of important. And that helps hold the grease into the wheel hub. I found that it works actually pretty well. I'm going to be installing a new uh, drive hub on the wheel as well. Um, the one on the wheel, well, I'll show you in a minute. It had a little bit of life left in it, but if I'm going to, if I'm replacing it, I might as well match new with new, be less play, and thus they'll both last a little bit longer. So I have the new drive hub installed, and I went ahead and put in new bolts as well. In fact, I ordered drive hubs and bolts to cover all my drive wheels, all four of them. Um, because they're coming due, just, just like this one. Now this is the old drive hub. And if you can see, I don't know if you can, the splines are a little sharp, but there is still just a tiny bit of flat spot on them. Now the reason that I replaced these bolts, these are the originals, and I've had uh, several of these ring off. Um, you can see they're much deeper and the hex head is larger and the spec on these is 30 newton meters you're supposed to torque them down to. Known issue and you should replace the bolts as you go and the new bolts have a smaller uh, hex head and they're shallower. I put them next to each other so you can see the difference there. That's the old one, that's the new one. I surmise that these are simply stronger. The new ones are stronger because the cut's not as deep and you've got more metal there. I'm done. It is all back together. I went through and double checked all of my bolts and tightness and fluid level. Um, like I said, 100 miles, I replaced the fluid just to visually check it and flush out anything I may have left in there and flush out the grease, which is gonna come out in it. Everything uh, looks good. The, the final drive uh, being two colors, you know, uh, eh, I, I'm actually okay with that. It matches the swing arm. It just looks a little different. And I've never been accused of being typical, so <laughs> I guess it fits me too. Uh, probably do a test ride once I see what this thunderstorm you may or may not hear outside. It's no rain, it's just thundering and lightning. Typical Georgia afternoon. That was a bear. So everything goes well. We'll be going on about a 500 mile, five, 600 mile trip here next week. Not far, not as much as we had originally planned. Um, so yeah. And it's not that this was bad, it was just unexpected that I would have to do it when I had to do it and not anticipated, didn't have the parts here. Just a little bit of a, a frustration, but we look good now.